Well, good afternoon, everybody. It gives me such an enormous pleasure to welcome our guest to the stage today. Jose Antonio Abreu is with us, whom you've met in film and by uh, learning about him from the participants, the founder of El Sistema, Maestro Abreu, a very warm welcome. Thank you for being with us. With him is Rodrigo Guerrero, who also works for uh, El Sistema, and Rodrigo is going to be translating for Maestro Abreu. And of course, uh, the music director of both the Los Angeles Philharmonic and the Simon Bolivar Symphony Orchestra of Venezuela, and a graduate of El Sistema, El Sistema Gustavo Dudamel. Well, thank you both so much for being here. We're having just an extraordinary time. Um, I'm going to begin with Maestro Abreu. Could you tell us in 1975, just before 1975, when you started El Sistema, what was the need you saw in the Venezuelan society? Back then, the education musical Venezolana Disponía de un buen número de escuelas de música. Back then, Venezuelan musical education had available a, a, num, a good number of music Fundamentalmente schools. para enseñar instrumentos. Fundamentally with instrumental teaching. Y algunos pequeños coros. And some very few small choirs. Pero faltaba la práctica orquestal. But there was very little space for orchestral Los practice. Los estudiantes no tenían en general students did not have in general la posibilidad de hacer práctica orquestal ni práctica de cámara tampoco. the possibility of orchestral practice or even chamber music practice entre otras cosas por las, las estructuras físicas amongst other challenges was that we just simply didn't no have the structural en la, en la mayor parte de las ciudades the structures that could allow this not even in, in the major towns entonces mi primer propósito en 1975 so my first purpose in 1975 fue animar la práctica orquestal entre los estudiantes de música. Was to encourage orchestral practice amongst our students. Y por ahí comenzó la reunión de un grupo de muchachos. And this started with the gathering of a group of young people. De las escuelas de música de Caracas. From the music schools of Caracas. Y se conformó una orquesta. And we created an orchestra. Eh, que comenzó muy mal porque comenzamos con apenas 11 muchachos. An orchestra that started very badly as we started with only 11 children. Pero eh, a pesar de esto, teníamos la voluntad de continuar luchando contra los obstáculos del medio. But in spite of this, we, we had the will to fight against all of the obstacles of y the medium. la noche del primer ensayo, and on the night of the first rehearsal, yo le prometí a los muchachos, I promised those present que iba a estar con ellos hasta el fin y que iba a convertir la orquesta en una orquesta mundial. That I would stick with them to the very end and that that would turn that orchestra into a world class orchestra. Hicimos una convocatoria a otras ciudades vecinas. We started spreading the word to neighboring cities. Y en el segundo ensayo tuvimos 40. And in our second rehearsal we had 40. Y en el tercero 76. And by the third rehearsal we had 76. De manera que a los tres meses so within three months, estábamos en condiciones de estrenar la orquesta. We were already in conditions of, of premiering the orchestra. Yo escogí el edificio de la Cancillería del Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores. I chose the, the, the building of the Chancellor's Office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Porque era la manera de presentar al, puer, al cuerpo diplomático la orquesta. So that we could introduce the orchestra to the diplomatic corps. Interesar a todos los países en el to get as much interest as possible amongst the neighboring countries. Por cierto, el de los and of course, the ambassador of the United States was present that day, who was very kind to us on that night. Y ahí un coral. And that day we had a symphonic choral concert. Ya una de 75 we already had an orchestra of 75 young people. Inmediatamente iniciamos la expansión al, a, las, a las ciudades del occidente. We immediately started expanding ourselves into the eastern cities Los of the country. Teques, Maracay, Valencia y Barquisimeto. Los Teques, Maracay, Valencia, Barquisimeto. 
Sí. Y en todas estas ciudades encontramos un entusiasmo enorme. And we found great enthusiasm in all of the cities. But the main technical problem el que para algunos instrumentos no había suficientes docentes. was that simply we did not have enough teachers sí. for certain instruments. De manera que teníamos que comenzar por reclutar profesores. So we started to recruit teachers. En aquel momento para los instrumentos de viento, Back then for woodwinds, teníamos una fuente que eran las bandas. We had the bands, the marching bands and the local symphonic bands. Entonces, los profesores de vientos de las bandas fueron nuestros primeros maestros instructores. So the wind teachers for those bands were our first woodwinds and brass para teachers. Los metales, las maderas. For brass and woodwinds. Sí. Eh, y luego ya comenzamos entonces a crear en Caracas. And then we started to create in Caracas. Unos cursos especiales de entrenamiento. Special courses and in, in preparing. Para formar con mucha modestia, pues, eh, pero con con mucha pasión jóvenes maestros que quisieran apoyarnos en la idea. To modestly teach, but with great passion, young people and, and turn them into e, teachers for our program. Maestros, esos primeros maestros, and those first con teachers que contamos, that eran we had, miembros de una orquesta que fue la primera fundada en Venezuela. Were members of the first orchestra that was funded Se in Venezuela, en 1930, which was founded in 1930, y la fundó un founded by the venerable Maestro Vicente Emilio Soho. Sí, y esa orquesta estaba constituida en 90% por músicos extranjeros. That orchestra back then was constituted by over 90% of Pero foreign musicians. Extranjeros de muy alto nivel. But foreign musicians of very, very high caliber. Diez de ellos me acompañaron en la creación de, de esta primera escuela. Ten of them came with me to prepare the first generation of students. Entonces ya teníamos una orquesta. So we already had an orchestra. Y una preescuela. And a preschool to say una something. Una especie de preconservatorio. A, a kind of preconservatory. De esta manera eh, comenzó el proceso, luego nos extendimos a las ciudades de Oriente. So in this way we started the process, we expanded centro, sur, towards the east and the center and south of the country. Y finalmente al sur. And finally, to the Venezuela deep south. 24 Venezuela has 24 Hoy provinces. Decir que al cabo de 38 años, Today, we can say that after 38 years, el sistema está extendido a las 40, a las 24 provincias. El sistema is present in all 24 provinces of the Venezuelan country. So this is a, a brief of how we start the program and how it has developed itself. De aquel entonces en adelante, From then on, cada generación ha formado a la otra. Every, each generation has uh, supported the next one. Tenemos una inmensa cantidad de jóvenes que ya son maestros, docentes, profesores. We have an immense amount of students that have become teachers themselves. Que enseñan instrumentos. Who are teaching instruments. Y que entrenan a las diferentes secciones de la orquesta. And are, and are training the different uh, sections of the orchestras. Es decir, que hay ya todo un cuerpo docente so serio we already have a very large teaching body eh, que está preparado para enfrentar las necesidades de la orquesta en todo el país that is prepared to uh, um, confront the necessities of the orchestra in every part of the incluso country incluso en lugares tan apartados como por ejemplo el delta del río Orinoco in, even in places as remote as the delta of the Orinoco river y el amazonas fronterizo con Brasil and the Amazon within the frontier with Brazil, que son territorios con una fuerte proporción de población indígena. which are territories with a very, very large native population. También ya la orquesta está firmemente asentada. And this is where the orchestra is very, very firmly uh, pres present. Entonces, de las primeras orquestas juveniles, and the first youth orchestras han surgido en cada provincia, in every province, orquestas sinfónicas, we now have every province with symphony orchestras representing their own regions. Y se han creado nuevas orquestas juveniles y estas han engendrado orquestas infantiles and, también. And we've had more and more youth orchestras that in themselves they have created children's symphony orchestras as well. De manera que entonces cuando asociamos eh, las, los mejores talentos de todas las orquestas juveniles so when we pull together all of the talents of all of the youth orchestras in the country podemos obtener una bellísima orquesta nacional juvenil de Venezuela we can have a beautiful national symphony youth orchestra of Venezuela e igual con los niños and the same with the children's symphony orchestra tendremos una sinfónica infantil todos los años renovada every year we have a, a new children's symphony orchestra y, y cada vez de mayor nivel and every year it's a, a much higher level. El año, por ejemplo, Next year, for example, the Children's Symphony Orchestra will be present in the Salzburg Durante Festival. festival va a participar. They will participate during the festival, y el Simon va a esa conducted by Maestro Sir Simon Rattle.
para dirigir la primera sinfonía de Mahler. To conduct Mahler one. Pero esto ha sido un largo camino. But it's been a very long way. <laughs> sí, un largo camino, muy difícil. A very long and difficult way. Que ha requerido una gran tenacidad sobre todo. That has required great tenacity amongst Porque, everything. Porque eh, los obstáculos eh, surgen siempre, por supuesto. Because obstacles are always there. A pesar de que el, el proyecto tiene un fuerte apoyo, un fuerte apoyo del Estado y de la sociedad civil venezolana. In spite of the project having great support from the Venezuelan state and the Venezuelan civil society. A veces las distancias son muy grandes. Sometimes the distance eh, is too great. Resulta difícil el transporte de los muchachos it a los lugares de estudio. It becomes difficult to move students from one place to the other. Pero lo estamos resolviendo paulatinamente disponiendo ahora de unidades de transporte numerosas. But we are solving those problems every day by uh, adding new transport units that allows to flex it to become more flexible and, so, and solve these problems. De todo este proceso eh, surge una generación brillante. Out of all of this process we have a brilliant generation por esta gloria de Venezuela que es Gustavo Dudamel. Which is headed by this glory of Venezuela which is Maestro Gustavo Dudamel. Who's our model, a role model for all our young people and students, and the ideal towards every Venezuelan young musician goes to. And the fact that he heads now the Simón Bolívar Symphony Orchestra of Venezuela. With the United States, we've always had since the very beginning. Muy importantes actividades. Yo nunca me olvidaré de que la primera visita que tuvimos nosotros some very important activities, and I will never forget that the first visit that we had, en, en we were doing a, a seminar in, in, in a country by the seaside. Y nos la de and we had a visit from the Illinois Youth Orchestra. Y un de una and we had a sí. wonderful exchange for a week-long exchange. Regresar a Illinois y encontrarme con los que ya hoy serán adultos. And this is something that I dream of, to go back to Illinois and meet with those young musicians who are now grown-ups and find out how, what are they doing and how did they y carry on with their musical careers. But over the years we've had many, many teachers sí, from the United States visit us. Por supuesto, el vínculo más fuerte lo constituye ahora el hecho de que Gustavo Es director musical de la Dire de la Filarmónica de Los Ángeles. But the strongest bond now is of course the fact that Gustavo is the musical director of the y, LA y Philharmonic. Ha asumido su función. And the fact that he has taken his role. Bajo principios análogos, es decir, él ha fundado ya en Los Ángeles. Under the principles that are una parallel. Una orquesta juvenil, varias, ya son dos o tres. And, and Gustavo has already funded different youth and children's symphony orchestras. El gran proyecto de las, o, o, de la Yola, de las... Eh, Orquesta Juvenil de Los Ángeles. Which is of course YOLA, the Youth Orchestra LA program. De un nivel muy alto. With a very, very high level as well. Realmente los, los, los vínculos con los Estados Unidos so our bonds with the United States have always been very strong, very cordial. Y estamos muy agradecidos de los maestros de este país que han acudido a Venezuela. And we're very thankful for all of the American teachers that have gone to Venezuela over the years. And we're also grateful to the American institutions that have supported and backed this type of exchange. And I'd like to, to thank uh, especially the Berkeley University and Carl, and Carl Performance and Matthias as well for the New England Conservatory in Boston, who has been a great friend for us for many years. And we had a very uh, multifaceted relationship that is of a permanent nature. We are, changing, we are exchanging teachers and students all the time and uh, sharing our experiences. And un nuevo paso que vamos a dar para afianzar muchísimo la relación fraterna entre la juventud musical de Venezuela y la juventud musical de los Estados Unidos. And this great steps that Cal Performance has given us today will allow us to strengthen the bonds with the California Youth Orchestra Movement, and I'm delighted to be here today. Y deseo que esto se desarrolle con el tiempo y que se convierta en un programa permanente. And I wish that this will develop further in the future, and it will become a permanent program for us to visit. Thank you, Maestro. If, if I could turn to Gustavo now, and 
Gustavo, could you describe to us your journey through El Sistema? Well, <laughs> of course. Well, how, how I always say, you know, Sistema is, is my life, is my family. I think if I go back, the things that I remember as a child is to be a musician, you know? Before that, I think I was three years old and I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but I remember when I started to, to be around this amazing and unique and magic world that Maestro Abreu built for us in Venezuela. Uh, I think I passed through all the steps of El Sistema. Even, of course, uh, when I started, I think in 1985, still El Sistema, you know, was growing up, you know, was still, you know, building, you know, orchestras around the country. And Lara, Barquisimeto, Lara State, my city, um, was one of the centers of, of all El Sistema. Also, of course, Maestro Abreu was studying in Barquisimeto. I remember the first place where I, where I went to study music was the same place where Maestro Abreu went the first time to study music with Doralisa de Medina. So at that time, the orchestra, the, the, let's say the building where the orchestra was working was the house of this great lady, this great teacher that was Doralisa de Medina. And still the same pianos, the same paintings, you know, everything was exactly, I think that house was, you know, never passed, I, I don't know how to say, never passed the time in, in this house. This was amazing, it was very musical. I still remember walking, listening one trumpet, you know, rehearsing uh, the, or studying the fanfare of Mother Five. And in the other room was a piano uh, player playing a Chopin student, a stud uh, a study. And for me it was like, wow, I love this. And I didn't play an instrument at that time. I was expecting to play the trombone, but how you know the history, my arm was very short. <laughs> Uh, we have one instrument in my house, but I was in love with the instrument, so I was waiting. I was studying solfege, harmony, contrapoint, all of that. And I remember, uh, you know, was a point that I was desperate to play because to, to, to know only theory, this was nothing. And all my friends, they were in the orchestra. But I was in the system, but no playing an instrument. And that was crazy. <laughs> You know, if you think that is something like, what, what are you talking about? And yes, I was waiting for my trombone until, <laughs> until on, all my friends, you know, the majority, they were playing violin. And I said, well, let's try with this, with this instrument. At the end, I finished playing the violin, you know, in the orchestra. And now Maestro talking about all the develop of, of, of of El Sistema, you know, I passed through many things. I remember we didn't have a place to study. In Barquisimeto, in Barquisimeto we were jumping from one house to another house, to another house, to another house, because, you know, ¿cómo se dicen los obstáculos? Obstacles. I, I, I was part of that. I had the same, the same thing, you know. As a, as, a, as a child, I remember uh, sometimes they call us La Orquesta, La Orquesta de los Sin Techo. I don't know how, how, how is that. Orchestra of the ones without a roof over their head. Exactly, you know, and that was really crazy. We were jumping one day, rehearsing here, one the other day. But at the end, amazing, because now we are now in the project in my town, in our town, to have a building by Frank Gehry, you know, a new hall. So can you imagine after 35, 36, 38 years, now dreaming all the, all the things that my maestro 
have fight for, you know, and what we have passed, you know, through, through all this history. Now we are having a hole by Frank Gehry. So I remember that they was conducting also um, sections of the orchestra as a violin player. The beautiful thing of El Sistema is that you start in a children, well, it's an it's a orchestra before, when you are before children. You know, you are really small. I don't know how you call that. We call initiation, I remember at that time, initiation orchestra. Then you jump to the media orchestra, then you go to the youth orchestra, and then the, the, you arrive to the orchestra, the professional. But the good thing, when you pass to the other orchestra, you became teacher of the orchestra below, you know, and it's amazing. So you start not only to, to play an instrument, to play in an orchestra, if not, you learn how to be a teacher, and in a way, a leader, because that was the way how, how my life was, you know, moving. I remember I was giving classes to, uh, of violin in my, in, my, in my city. I was traveling, I remember, to the small village of, this, of the large state to teach children. And eh, how you know, one day the conductor was late. I was there. <laughs> and I started to play with the orchestra. To play it was like a game. I started, I remember, I started to imitate conductors. <laughs> and I say, Von Karajan, Bernstein, ah. And then, of course, <laughs> the local conductors, I was imitating. And, and, and the orchestra was, ah. <laughs> Until a point, we started to work. And then I became the conductor of the orchestra. In me, I was 12, ye 12 years old. And, and when I was 14, 13, uh, they gave me the position of principal conductor of the orchestra. So after that, my life is this one. You know, a wonderful one. I, I love what I do, really, and I'm really thankful to God, to life, and to this man. <laughs> because without his, you know, his energy, his dreams, you know, it would be impossible to be here, you know, talking and conducting and playing music and singing for the, uh, for, for the children, for us. It's, it's really something unique. And every time that I go back to Venezuela, well, I'm still living in Venezuela, but when I'm traveling and I, you know, I'm, I'm traveling like two months or three months that I'm in Los Angeles or I'm in Berlin or in Vienna, uh, or in Italy, when I go back, it's amazing. Because you get this unique energy from these children, you know, that they are living for the music. And they are building life. They are build, building a life, and their families too, through the music. So you, you say like, oh my God, yeah, I was conducting the week before, I don't know, let's say, the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. And then you arrive to Venezuela and you get this kind of huge and amazing energy. And the energy to keep, to keep walking, <laughs> you know, to keep working for, for this dream that Maestro Abreu have given to us, that is to build a better world through music. And it's not utopic, it's something real. Is something that works, that is happening, and that is beautiful because what is music about? And art in general is about beauty. To play in an orchestra is a teamwork. So is is what we need for this crazy world and beautiful one. So that is my, my journey. Maestro Abreu, a question for you. I'm struck by a couple of things. The idea of family. 
Gustavo said that the El Sistema is your family. You also speak about it being a family. You, um, the other thing that struck me is that before Gustavo started an instrument, he had lessons in theory and harmony, counterpoint, solfege, all these things that are a foundation of a musical education. Um, when, when you started El Sistema, were you planning a comprehensive music education system, or was it purely for orchestral instruments? Desde luego yo siempre pensé en una formación musical integral. Of course, I always thought about an integral music for, musical formation. El, 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 el aspecto más importante que era la enseñanza justamente de las disciplinas teóricas, de la alta teoría musical, the, armonía, contrapunto, formas musicales, análisis. The most important uh, aspects of it, harmony, counterpoint, analysis. Ya Venezuela tenía una herencia brillante. We already had a very brilliant heritage in de Venezuelan la education. De venerable maestro Vicente Emilio Sojo. From the school of this venerable maestro, Vicente Emilio Sojo. Era que teníamos allí abundantes maestros que podían afrontar ese aspecto. So we had many teachers that could actually take this challenge. Pero esa ha sido una preocupación permanente hasta el extremo de que en este momento. But it's always been a permanent preoccupation of us. Además de ocupar el nuevo edificio eh, que, que tenemos en Caracas. So uh, to the point that in, uh, not only trying to uh, occupy all of our buildings dedicar, like the one that we have in Caracas. Vamos a dedicar una casa muy grande. We're dedicating a large homestead exclusivamente dedicada a la alta teoría musical specifically for musical theory y a la formación de los jóvenes y de los directores de las orquestas and the formation of our of our young musicians into conductors for the orchestras of the country en ese ámbito de tal manera pues que esa es una de las direcciones fundamentales nuestras en este momento specifically in these fields this is one of our fundamental directions now para consolidar la formación musical integral de nuestro pueblo to ensure and consolidate the integral musical education of our youth and children el otro aspecto que yo deseo destacar es el siguiente. The other aspect that I wish to bring forward is that there are two basic concepts that are continually linked to El Sistema. Claro, al lado de la realidad orquestal pasan algo desapercibido. Which besides the orchestral reality sometimes go unnoticed. And the first one is very important. Nosotros trabajamos con niños y jóvenes en toda Venezuela, we work, pero especialmente con niños y jóvenes de medianos y bajos recursos. We work in Venezuela with youth and children, but more, <laughs> it's very, very important for people to realize that we work with low income and middle income families. Ya Gustavo había hecho en su generosa intervención hacia mí en una reseña de lo que fue Barquisimeto, su ciudad natal. Gustavo made a very, very uh, uh, brief recount of what he, the reality of Barquisimeto pero was. Tal el énfasis de este aspecto. But it, the, the emphasis that we have is such que el esto un social that the Venezuelan antes. state considers this program a social program first and foremost. Y está desde el al de la and since the very beginning, it's been ascribed to the Ministry of Youth, Luego al de la then to the Ministry of Families. Y se ha a la de la and finally, now it's uh, it subscribes to the presidency of the republic. Para impulsar ciertos nuevos aspectos. De In order de to de move forward with new developments of the program. El más reciente de esos aspectos lo mencionó Gustavo. The most la recent one is the one that Gustavo mentioned, which is the development of Acabamos proper de infrastructure. Un edificio excelente en Caracas. We've just finished building an excellent building in Caracas. Con, con tecnología de primera. With a very high level of technology. Y hay dos organismos ya multilaterales. And we have two multilateral organisms. Que son el Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo. Which is the Inter-American Development Bank. La Corporación Bank Andina de Fomento. And the Andean Development Fund. Que están financiando un proyecto de extensión nacional de infraestructura. Which are financing a large nationwide infrastructure program. En cada provincia habrá por lo menos un gran edificio musical. So that every province in Venezuela has a proper concert hall. Para lo cual se han dotado ya los terrenos. To which we have already acquired land. Terrenos de extensiones variables. Of different sizes. Muy amplios, muy grandes. But always trying to make it to make up as much room as possible. Y esa es una importantísima and this is a very, very important direction to which we're moving forward. And the other aspect that I wish to point out 
is that the bank and the corporation han colaborado con nosotros enormemente en otros aspectos have also collaborated with us in different aspects por ejemplo nos han permitido construir un sistema de evaluación del impacto social de la they've allowed us to develop a, a, a system of social impact measurement registro we now have an annual report de la penetración del proyecto of the depth of the penetration of the program la clase media y en la clase popular. into the into middle classes and low income classes as well y eso es una enorme contribución que estos organismos and it's an enormous contribution that we're getting from said organisms because it helps us to project the new developments. And lastly, when we talked about Sistema, there's something I'd like to point out. The word sistema, system, should not be interpreted, uh, interpreted sorry, as, uh, as a fixed concept. It's, it actually stems from the concept of a network, which is much, much more available. We are a network of orchestras. We are a network of choirs, of youth, of, and, and youth choirs, and children's orchestras. Se ha denominado sistema. So through analogy, this network has been called a system. Pero no porque constituyamos un cuerpo rígido de normas. But it's not that we are a rigid set of rules. Al contrario, impera la, la libertad de cátedra. On the contrary, we have Estamos a very, very large freedom of teaching. We are always trying to allow to get as many, as much input as possible from outside teachers. We try to promote the creation of new teachers. Hay jóvenes ejecutantes de la orquesta que son excelentes pedagogos. We have young performers in the orchestras which are excellent y, pedagogues. Y hemos creado cátedras nuevas and we've created new, uh, new teaching systems based on this great young people. So we do have a great degree of freedom for creation within the project. And this is very important to be clear of. Maestro Abreu, when you began it, did you begin El Sistema as a social program or as a musical program? No. Siempre como un proyecto social. It was always a social program. Porque cuando yo fui estudiante, because when I was a student, mis condiscípulos, todos mis condiscípulos, all my condiscípulos, eran muchachos de clase media baja y clase popular. Were young people from middle classes or from the popular classes, low income. Y vi muchos de ellos. And I saw many of them. Perderse. Get lost. No tenían la manera económica de vivir. Because they didn't have the economic way of living, of making a living through music. Y eso pasó mucho en and this happened a lot all throughout Latin America. Music did not have this social projection ella, that was strong enough to allow someone to make a living off of it. So young talent went through school and then had to dedicate themselves to other activities. And I saw it get lost many, many times. I remember the case of a bassoonist, brilliant bassoonist, who reaches his, his graduation date with his instrument, the first Venezuelan to graduate as a bassoonist. And finally, because he, he could never find opportunity to work in Venezuela, he went and became an odontologist. And today he's a great odontologist. But it's, it's, it's a waste of musical talent because of the lack of opportunity. Yo mismo, eh, siendo muchacho, I myself, being a young boy, my father told me that I needed to have something else sobrevivir. in order to survive. Y tuve que estudiar economía. And I had to go into economics, sí, que era la única carrera cuyo horario me permitía which was the only career in the university that, that I could schedule besides my musical studies. Eso, sí. <laughs> And for many years, I had to share my time, to split my time, up until when I was 35. 
cuando entonces resolví re regresar a la educación musical when, a través de un modelo nuevo. When I decided to dedicate myself completely to musical education through the implementation of a new model. Está íntimamente vinculado a la cuestión social el problema. But it, it's been always intimately connected to the social aspects of Venezuela. No social, to me, que no sirva al pueblo, art that does not have a social goal, that does pueblo, not serve the people, that is isolated from the necessity of the, of, the, of, the, of the groups, no an art that goes un against the needs of the, of the people, un, it's un not an art. De las más altas, eh, y, eh, metas de la art needs to be a missionary for the highest eh, goals of humanity. El arte tiene que a los de un país. It's art that humanizes the citizenship of a country. Por tanto, el arte es de so art becomes a, ban a, a flag bearer of citizenship. En una democracia, el arte es parte fundamental del sistema democrático. In democracy, art should be an integral part Porque of the democratic la system. Artista es la formación de un hombre libre, de un hombre humanizado. Because the formation of an artist is the formation of a true free person, de un of a human que person. Inmerso en los valores del espíritu, que lucha por los valores del espíritu. Of men that are actually striving for the creation of values of the spirit. Que mire el horizonte de la belleza. One that can look upon the horizon of beauty. A six-year-old that starts practicing in an orchestra. De, de Beethoven, working Mozart, with small arrangements of Mozart and Beethoven. He starts to contemplate beauty through music. Un mundo misterioso, sublime, que el arte transmite y contiene. He can start seeing a, a, a world that's beautiful and sublime that is contained within the art. Y que por supuesto, lo convierte en un idealista. And, be, and makes of him an un idealist. De un mundo mejor. A messenger of a better world. So last year when we heard in the cathedral in Los Angeles. Un concierto de la juvenil de, de Los Ángeles fundada por Gustavo. We heard a concert from Yola in Los Angeles. Y estaba la catedral atestada de padres y madres. And we had a very large cathedral completely full sociales, of, of parents, of mothers, fathers from very, very low income families. Yo vi a, a, las, a las madres extasiadas ante sus niños tocando con su uniforme, con su dignidad, sobre todo porque la música es portadora de dignidad. And I could see mothers and fathers prostrated in front of their children with their uniforms and their instruments, completely overwhelmed by the dignity that their children bear. We have to realize that the moment that a child receives an instrument stops being a poor child. A child with an instrument is no longer poor. A child with an instrument and a teacher is no longer excluded. So our project is seen and perceived as an, as an instrument of social inclusion. And of course, this represents for us an extraordinary mission. Una misión que traspasa las fronteras de Venezuela. And a mission that goes beyond Venezuelan borders. Por eso luchamos por, por llevar este mensaje a Colombia, Ecuador, a Trinidad. So a we've always struggled México, to get Brasil. this message across Toda to la, all our neighboring countries. La América del Sur completa. The whole of Latin America. Y el Caribe está ya and the Caribbean is already committed with this project, with this model and this ideal. Now, Central America is, is starting to get in gear. And the Inter-American Development Bank has been a very, very important promoter of this uh, spread of the ideology. Now in Europe we have, for example, Sistema Scotland, presided by the great philosopher Richard Holloway, an eminent Scottish philosopher. And that leads this great project. We just witnessed this summer in the middle of Raploch in Scotland, a wonderful community concert conducted by Gustavo. Uh, Gustavo conducted a great concert with very, very young and poor children that performed side by side with the Simón Bolívar Orchestra, an incredible, an incredible concert. And this is all due thanks to Sistema Scotland. 
que, que, que está funcionando también en Inglaterra. Also the Harmony Program, the, the Harmony Project in London. Y Claudio Abado está promoviendo el sistema en Italia también. And Sistema Italia, promoted by Claudio Abado himself. En Croacia se acaba de constituir también. We know of, of initiatives in Croatia. En Grecia hay un enorme interés in Greece. Por, por desarrollar este tipo de experiencia. The, that there's just uh, a boiling of interest y, y no in developing this type of experiences. Es, es el, and it's not just copying an abstract model, el it's que just to take the core values and apply it to your teaching. It's just Todo making joven, music teaching available to as many people as possible, to make it available to every child. And that every social force needs to be in line so that they can demand projects similar like to this and that government needs to support this type of initiatives in order to really change society. I deeply believe that music can change society. And I, and I know that everybody here knows that music can truly change society. especially when it's expressed with that passion and uh, clarity of thought. Thank you so much, Maestro. Gustavo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I, want, I want you actually to tell us about your experience coming to the United States and working with kids in, in Los Angeles. And tell us how you inculcate, you, because you embody all the values that Maestro Abreu has lived, and you do it so magnificently and with such warmth and with musical priorities at, at its heart. But you, you're translating it now for a generation, not from 1975, but from 2012. Well, uh, well, it's, a, it's an amazing experience, of course. Uh, this has been a dream, you know, to, to, to see uh, this program, the Jola and Hola in Los Angeles, how these children have changed their life, and not only to change uh, uh, in, the, in the artistic level, if not as a citizen, what Maestro was talking about. I remember when, uh, in 2009, when I started as a music director in, in Los Angeles Philharmonic, and I visited the first time this, uh, this orchestra. It was amazing because the most beautiful thing was to see the eyes of the children, you know, asking for something. You know, and, and, and this is the thing, what Maestro Abreu said. They, they became rich in a way. They had the richness of art in their hands and in, in their hearts, of course. And through this time, until well, only three years because, or four years, when I became music director of Los Angeles, 2009, no? Or 2008? 2009, and we are in 2012. Yes, okay. I'm starting my fourth season, it's true. So, but it's amazing where they have arrived in the social, uh, uh, as a social element, and also as an artistic element. And the most important thing in all of this uh, uh, musical world that Maestro Abreu have created, El Sistema, is the teamwork, how you learn to play, how you learn to be a musician, being or playing together with other uh, uh, musicians. And that, is, and that is the Bolivar Orchestra, for example. I remember when I started with the Children Orchestra, I was 10, 11 years old, the National Children Orchestra. So we are talking about 20 years ago. And still, when you see the orchestra, the 80% of the orchestra 
we are the same musicians. For 20 years together, starting as a children, you know, as a child, you know, as a, you know, learning. I remember now the national children play Mahler one. We were playing an arrangement of Beethoven fifth, you know, and and and, 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 and that is crazy when you see this orchestra playing Mahler one, you say, oh my God, what we were doing? We are we're playing two notes. Well, is all of that, you know, is the and now the Bolivar, let's say, as a I, I don't like I, I, I don't like that thing of professional, but as an orchestra that play regularly as a professional orchestra. Um, Still, you feel, people talk about the sound, people talk about the energy, but that is coming from the values that you get through the music, through the teamwork, and it's the most amazing thing. When I go to Jola, after three or four years, I don't remember because I'm out of time, uh, you see that. Last time I went, for a rehearsal in the new orchestra, Hola. They were rehearsing Nabucco Overture. That is not easy. And I was amazed because only in three years how they have, and the parents is the most amazing thing. I don't know who is more happy, or the children or the parents, but they feel part of the society. Because with the people that we work, some of them, they are part of the exclusion, you know, of, 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 of the community. And when you see them, you know, sitting, listening, their children playing. And I remember, the first concert was at the Hollywood Bowl, 18,000 people. And and that was amazing. I remember still the almost 80% of the orchestra, also 90% is the same. Uh, is the same. And it's so great to see the dreams. How they say, you know, I, I remember the timpani player. He wanted to be a basketball player. And now he is like a teacher, he's a leader of the group, and now he wants to become timpani player of the Le Philharmonic Orchestra. So, I'm not saying that sports, no, no. It's the kind of power that music has. You know, the, this magic thing. And that is the system. That is this project. That is Yola. That is Hola. That is a big noise in Scotland, Harmony, the project in Italy. And every project work, works different. The system, well, differently in the in the conditions of the community the same happened in venezuela you know we have a nucleo for example let's say uh, in um, let's talk about caracas in propatria and we have another in la rinconada they have different needs you know but at the at, at the same time they have the most important need that is to be included in the society through music. So, simple. I cannot say anymore because Maestro Abreu, he was very clear. Ah, and he was economist, but he graduated cum laude. So, I don't know how, how he was, you know, studying economy only to, to study music, and he became, you know, the teacher of the university. Uh, it's amazing. This man, uh, uh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to leave the last word with Maestro Abreu then. <laughs> Maestro, you have a room full of people who are music educators and are passionate or are passionate about music education. You have a perspective of now 38 years of El Sistema and a lifetime lived thinking about this subject. What would you like to what thought would you like to leave with them from what you have learned? Uh, 
el mensaje que quisiera dejar uh, the message I would like to leave es el de que cada día en este mundo que vivimos every day in this world we live in todos debemos afirmar y reafirmar rotundamente nuestra vocación we all need to affirm and reaffirm our vocations creer en lo que estamos haciendo to believe in what we're doing extenderlo a la mayor cantidad posible de jóvenes y niños to extend it to the largest amount of children and young people possible al intercambio internacional to open ourselves to international exchange promover en nuestras comunidades el canto coral to promote in our communities choral singing promover también la creación de orquestas en nuestras comunidades to promote the creation of orchestras in our communities no importa que no esté bajo la inscripción de una institución determinada it doesn't matter if it happens under or outside a determined institution mientras más flexible y más amplia va the a ser the more flexible and wide it is the better y con eso estoy haciendo un llamamiento también and to this I'm calling out a consolidar estos vínculos to consolidate these links que a través de la Universidad de Berkeley estamos creando through Berkeley con that, through Cal University and Berkeley we are doing today y, y con el broche de oro de Gustavo and with Gustavo as our, as our golden connection sí. y, y es realmente un proyecto viable and this is a viable program no es una utopía. what I'm saying it's not utopia lo que estoy diciendo es realmente un proyecto viable, What I'm factible. saying is viable, it's factual. Y es importante encontrar and it's important to find a way to organize a los educadores musicales music educators around these goals. Ojalá que mucho, quizá todos, ojalá todos, hopefully a lot of you, hopefully all of you, como músicos, como educadores, como profesores, today as musicians, as teachers, eh, eh, lograsen establecer una especie de de pacto institucional interno if you were if you could manage to create an internal pact este proyecto, to go forward with these projects Yola, and to have the, the example of Yola en, en to be followed California, through all of California and the United está, States de hecho, se está a cabo en and it's already happening in many many states un muy el año we had a very important symposium this year todos los where we had participation from pretty much every state Todas in the country ha esta, esta este, este so calor. initiatives are coming from all over the place there's supuesto, great warmth towards it no puedo estas sin and I can't conclude la without en, en thanking reunión. you for coming here today to this reunion eh, como colega, to embrace you as colleagues y que todos en and en to wish that sometime you can all come sueños. to Venezuela so that you can share our dreams. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to just add my heartfelt thanks to Rodrigo for doing an extraordinary job translating. Um, Gustavo Dudamel, thank you for everything you're doing this week and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. It's an enormous pleasure and a great honor to have you with us this week. And Maestro Jose Antonio Abreu, what can I say? Thank you for your incredible words and the generous and warm way you express them. We look forward to your next visit and we hope it's very soon. Gracias, Maestro. Thank you.